Okay, we're back. It's just past the hour. This is Kevin Garber, the CEO and co-founder of Managed Flitter. Uh, I am based in downtown Sydney, Australia. It's 8 a.m. here. It's probably a different time wherever you are in the world. We have people online from all over the world. Welcome to this webinar from uh, wherever you are in the world. Thanks to a special thank you to all the Managed Flitter users, pro users, business users, free users. Um, and I'd like to introduce um, our presenter for today, Evan Dunn. Evan Dunn is based in Seattle, the west coast of the USA. Evan um, is one of these rare individuals that really understands Twitter and he really understands managed Flutter. He understands how to get value out of these social media networks. Um, and uh, Evan, um, thank you very much for joining us. Thursday, your time. Yeah, thanks so much, Kevin. And uh, thanks, Managed Flutter, for putting this on. And um... To all of you who do use Manage Flutter out there, I think you made a great decision. I've used it for a year and I really love it. Just to, um, let, just to let people know, Evan doesn't actually formally work for Manage Flutter, so he is an independent yeah. sort of genius. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> they, they paid me to say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and, no, they didn't uh, pay me to say that. So, Evan, I think we're going to kick kick um, straight forward into it. I'm going to monitor the sure. questions and I'm going to monitor people raising their hands, but we're going to try hold that off until the end of the webinar. But just a reminder to everyone listening to this webinar and watching it, please send through questions through GoToWebinar. Please raise your hand if you want to ask something, but we are going to wait until the end. Um, you got you got James on board, who's the CEO and tech genius of Manage Flutter. He's going to be able to answer a lot of questions at the end. You got myself that can answer questions. CTO, CTO, unless you gave me information. <laughs> it's a I'm side. CTO, not CEO, a side, just to be clear. <laughs> uh, it's, sorry, did I say CEO? Anyway, anyway CEO, yeah. <laughs> James is the tech genius. You got myself, who's the CEO, that can answer some questions, and we also got Chelsea Pl Plowright, who's um, um, yeah, she's muted, which is a, a rare feat. And we also got Joe Small, who's so we got we got a bit of the team here. So hold your questions, note them down. Evan, I'm going to hand it over to you. Give us a shout if you need any any hands. Let's go for a Twitter for business, unlocking the mystery: how to supercharge your Twitter account. It's all yours. Cool. Thanks so much, Kevin. Um, yeah, you could, really quick. My name is Evan Dunn. You can find me on Twitter, marketer underscore social. Um, and I'm going to introduce myself briefly. I'm director of social media marketing at Marketeering Group here in Seattle. We do full service digital marketing for small business. Um, in the past year, I've worked with over 150 clients in over 25 industries, uh, primarily small businesses and small budgets. So tools like Manage Flutter and a couple of others that I'll recommend um, are absolutely pivotal, critical to um, making things work on a small budget. And I've also gone from zero real and targeted Twitter followers to 13,000 real and targeted Twitter followers. I've used Twitter to gain over 20 clients and raise over $50,000 for crowdfunding campaigns. And I'll go through some of the strategies for that that can be widely applied to a lot of business goals that you might have. And um, last thing is if you analyze my Twitter account right now, you'll see I get 30 plus new followers each day and over 80% of my tweets are responded to, uh, retweeted or favorited. So they get some sort of interaction. Um, and a brief outline for today, um, Kevin mentioned we're gonna do a QA and a at the end. And I wanna leave as much time for that as possible because I think there'll probably be a lot of good questions that come through. Um, first, we're going to over, go over two principles that I think are really um, pivotal to understanding social media for business, but particularly Twitter for business. And then we're going to lay the foundation of what um, my recommendations for, you know, a, a good Twitter presence that uh, serves as a jumping off point for accomplishing real business goals with Twitter. And then I'm going to go th through two, um, the two top Twitter for business methods that I've seen um, and I've used them dozens of times for different clients. So um, let's get into it. So the two principles, the first one is social media is a directory, like an address book or a phone book. Um, it's an interactive directory, right? Which means there are people out there who can help you accomplish your business goals, whether it's an industry partner, even a blogger or a media contact, or hopefully plenty of clients and customers. Um, in my opinion, Twitter is the best for a few reasons, um, and I, I wrote a blog about this recently. 
um, six reasons why Twitter's the best social network for organic marketing. Um, it has, you know, one privacy setting, which is a protected account, and almost no one uses it, which means you can search the bios of pretty much every Twitter user, and you can interact with them. You can see their tweets. Um, and there's also no algorithms on the tweets, which can get really messy. You just have to start paying for ads on Facebook now um, because of their algorithms. And, uh, yeah, so I, I love using Twitter for business. The second is that realism is, is incredibly important. In digital marketing, a 2% conversion rate is good. And what I mean by that is, so if you reach, if, if, um, if you run like a, a Google AdWords campaign or you, you get, you know, 10,000 organic views in Google AdWords, 2% of them actually buying your product or service is a pretty typical conversion rate, despite what industry or product or service you might be selling. Um, so it's good to remember that you need to get the word out to a lot of people. You can't expect 50% of people to respond, uh, you know, favorably wanting to buy your product when you send out one or two tweets. You can't expect 50% of the people you follow to follow back. Um, so it's just good to remember that, that volume is really important, basically, is the idea there. Um, when you're trying to make money with anything, you know, the more words you can get out, the better. Um, so as far as, as far as laying the foundation, um, you, you, I mean, you want to set up a good profile. And it's important to make the distinction between a business profile and a personal profile. I think you should use your personal profile for business. Part of the reason is uh, a lot of people like to interact with a human face, right? In that profile photo, they like to see that human, um, human face right there. Um, they like to interact with that and follow that better. I, I couldn't find the study. I was trying to find the study to put it in here, but there was a study that was done that showed people were like 50% more likely to follow back if they were followed by someone, uh, you know, whose profile photo was a face rather than a brand. Um, so of course you're going to need, you know, your your business profile that's ready to, you know, tweet industry related topics and blogs and interesting things. But you're also going to really benefit from using your a personal presence on Twitter to talk with people and interact with people. And for a couple of campaigns, I'm going to mention later. Um, and with the new Twitter just rolled out their new profiles. Um, I mean, I think what's important with the old Twitter profile is still the same, you know, just a good cover photo, a bio that's clear that says who you are and what you do and your location, you know, just say your city and just a really clear, accurate location as well. Um, posting 20 to 30 times a day, including retweets is like pretty typical. I mean, without an algorithm, that just means if I'm following a hundred people, you know, that's a lot of new tweets that just get pushed down and down and down in my home feed. Um, a couple of tools I want to recommend here for helping you get the most out of your tweeting. Tweeria.com is a great tool for finding when most of your followers are online. Um, basically, it just analyzes your Twitter account, emails you when it's done, and says, hey, looks like most of your people are online between you know, 10 a.m. And, and noon, um, your time whatever. So, you know, it's a great way of knowing maybe, maybe you've got a, a lot of followers in a different time zone. So, and it's been a few months since you reanalyzed when you should be tweeting. And so you're looking at it again, you're like, well, it looks like I need to change when I'm tweeting because all these new followers three hours away in a time zone. The second one is feedly.com. And when you're out there looking for interesting content, um, I'm always thinking it'd be so nice if the interesting content could just come to me. So I go around and I dig for blogs and I, um, I connect them to a category in Feedly. So I have one for, you know, social media marketing news, um, a lot of blogs that talk about algorithm updates, and then I can easily tweet them out from Feedly, post them to my other social networks as well. And uh, the last thing before jumping into the two strategies is managing responses. So if you're out there using Twitter for business, you're going to get a lot of replies, mentions, direct messages. Um, so the first thing I want to recommend is manage Flutter's inbox feature. I really like using it because it turns my, rep my replies, my mentions on Twitter into uh, a lot like email. So I click a mention. It gives me a little reply box. I can reply. I can also sort them all by influence, which is pretty cool. 
And then the only notifications you really need for Twitter um, are when someone mentions you, someone sends you a direct message, or someone really replies to one of your tweets. And the reason I bring this up is people often complain with Twitter about the noise, right? You're going to get tons of emails, you're going to get tons of you know, iOS notifications or whatever you're using. Um, so I, these are the three notifications that I leave on. I turn every, everything else off, and it just makes life a lot easier because I have 30 Twitter accounts connected to my phone. All right, so jumping into the stuff that I think you're really going to be interested in. So the top two Twitter for business methods that I've seen. The first is growing your followers, and this is a pretty basic idea, right? More followers equals more interactions equals more click-throughs equals a higher conversion rate. Um, it, it not necessarily a higher conversion rate so much as more conversions, right? That's sort of a typo. Um, and um, how to do this, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. So I, I like to do this using Manage Flitter. So I, I go into Manage Flitter's account search um, this is a strategy called targeted following. And there could be a lot of other names for it. Um, and in the account search, I search in the bio and location fields only. Sometimes I do location if I need to. I might search like um, CMO in the bio for a chief marketing officer. And then in location, I'll put Seattle, right? So I know I can find all the chief marketing officers in Seattle on Twitter. Um, and I also mark only active users because if, if they don't use their Twitter account anymore, it's been a year since they tweeted, um, then it's not really helpful to me. Only active users removes all users who haven't tweeted in the last 30 days. Uh, and then what I do is I add them to a, to a list or I, um, I just say the, the follow later, later thing on the right. I do batch select first and then you select them all and then you hit follow later. It puts them into your process pool. And then um, I follow 90 a day, and I come up with that number the hard way. I've been suspended by Twitter several times on different accounts for following too many. They get picky sometimes if you follow more than 100. Um, so 90 is a nice safe number um, to not hit that 100 mark. And that's if you have more than 100 Twitter followers already. Um, and with, with that strategy, uh, I've been able to guarantee at least 200 and usually at least 300 or 400 new Twitter followers per month. And these are all like good Twitter followers that are interested in what you want to do. Um, so if you're, you know, you're running a Twitter account for a blog on fashion and you look for people who are really interested in fashion, you could look for other fashion bloggers all around the world and follow 90 of them a day. And um, usually you'll get, you know, a five to 15% follow back rate. And then you go in and you unfollow the ones who haven't followed you back after three or four or five days. The second method is, um, I wrote a blog on it called Twitter to Close Repeatable Social Sales Funnel. So I don't really have a name for this method per se. Um, this is my favorite method on social media for business and it can be widely applied. Um, and it, it involves that, that idea of volume, right? So the more people I reach out to with this method, the more um, actual sales I'm going to make. And I drew this really dinky little graphic so to kind of demonstrate that visually. So the first one is that account search, just like I mentioned, where you search in the, the bio and the location if necessary. Um, and then what I do is I add all those users to a list. So let's say I get a hundred, um, you know, a uh, hundred targets. I add them to a list. And so now that Twitter list sort of acts as a, a folder where I can go and access it later. And then I, um, and the second step involves going to that list on Twitter, clicking the members of the list, not just looking at their tweets. Um, and there are two ways I can engage them. The first one is the soft engagement, which is just like favoriting a tweet, retweeting a tweet, basically attracting their attention, following them, uh, might get them to follow me and look at me with interest. And that's not going to get you much. So what I generally do is I tweet to each of them, and it, this is direct engagement. So I'll send them a tweet that just says, hey, I thought you might be interested in this based on your bio. Um, I'd love to email with you about it. You know, I'd love to connect on LinkedIn or, you know, have a phone call. Whatever you feel like is an appropriate 
level of engagement. Um, people do get a lot of noise on their Twitter account, but I've also found that there's a lot of favorable responses. At least people will retweet what you send them, which is great. Um, and then, you know, anywhere from 10 to 30% will respond and talk further, want to email. And then, so then the idea is to move it to LinkedIn or email. And the reason is these are both private connections. LinkedIn, you know, demands that you know the person personally. And email is like, the most private thing we do on the internet. It gets really annoying when people are invade our email. So you just ask if you can email them some more details. And then it gets more personal. You can give a better pitch, more than 140 characters. It's really helpful. So once you get there, then you're just trying to set a meeting, whether it's in person or by phone. Um, and sometimes the strategy you're using won't get all the way to this step four. But uh, it and at that point, it's pretty much up to your sales skills, you know, how good you are at, at finishing a pitch and, you know, handling a meeting. Um, so with, I'm going to give you a couple examples so you have a better idea of how this plays out. So with one of these Kickstarter campaigns I got asked to help with, this in January, this Kickstarter campaign it was 20 days in. They were trying to raise $25,000 um, for a really cool nonprofit project. And they only had 6,000. And they brought me in with 10 days left. And using this exact strategy, I wrote two press releases and I distributed them through Twitter to media targets that were interested in this type of nonprofit work. And um, they got 10,000 more dollars in 10 days just through this, um, no other influence. So that's one example of it working out. The second is business to business sales. There are two ways this can go. Um, blog subscription. So one of the clients I've worked with is like a cloud technology provider. And so they, they do consulting, you know, several thousand dollars per client it, um, is usually how it works with them. And they found that they told me that they get a lot of people who hire them after reading their blog for a while. So I said, well, let's just get out there and get you more blog subscribers, you know, find the potential clients the people interested in cloud technology, but also the people who are chief technology office officers, chief marketing officers, marketing managers, marketing leads, um, who might use their services to help them figure out how to use cloud products. And um, so then they end up subscribing to the blog through my tweeting to them about it. And then, you know, a smaller percentage of them become actual clients. And at the very least, they have more people reading their blog and distributing it to their friends and network. And then the other way that I've used this it, uh, for service pitches is, you know, like actually getting people to hire you. I've done it, done it for my own um, freelancing. And a, it was last June I was going through and doing this. I was looking for... Um, Basically, people who did uh, design or video or um, marketing of some kind that didn't really have a social media arm. And I found a bunch that were really interested. I got 10 clients in a month. Um, and uh, one of them was a video production agency that ended up being revolutionary to live streaming and it was just by reaching out to them and saying, hey, um, if you ever need help with social media, you know, I'd be happy to talk, that kind of thing, which you might get a lot of on social media. It can be, it can be kind of annoying, but if you do it right and you're really polite, you don't really demand anything. I think people are actually more likely to respond favorably. Um, so the last couple reminders, um, volume is really important. So when doing these, I end up tweeting to 300 people over the course of a week. Um, to do one of these campaigns. And um, that's why it happens so well on Twitter is because the volume is there, there's enough active monthly users, the target demographic is probably there as well, and, uh, and the lack of privacy settings. All these things just combine to enable you to reach out to so many people in such a short amount of time. Um, and then get creative with who can help you reach your goals. There are a lot of bloggers out there who are totally willing to feature your product, your service. Maybe you can find an exchange. Maybe there are industry partners who can help you with your product or service as well. 
Um, so yeah, the important thing to remember is there's a lot of ways you can accomplish your business goals. This strategy will just empower you to uh, find the people to partner with. So that's pretty much what I've got, and I want to turn it over for a question and answer. I don't know how much time that took exactly, um, but if Kevin, you want to hop back in and thanks, thanks, um, thanks, yeah. Evan. We'll we'll also we'll make the presentation available. We got we got um, a lot of questions that have come in. What I'd like to do also <laughs> is if you have a question, please raise your hand. There's a feature on GoToWebinar where you can raise raise your hand, and I will actually unmute you. And you can actually ask the question, and you can and aim it at either Evan um, about Twitter and Manage Flitter in general, or James some Manage Flitter specific questions, or myself some Manage Flitter specific questions. So I can see some hands have been raised. Um, I'm going to find the hands that have been raised. Um, when when I I'll call out your name. Just introduce yourself, where you're from. Um, just give us a 10 second grab about yourself and get into the question. We've got a lot to get through. We want to give everyone a chance. Let's keep it short and uh, concise. So, um, Eric Smith, hi, welcome to the Managed Flutter webinar. You unmuted, Eric. Hello. Okay. Eric's not on mic there. Let's, let's go for another one. Um, Jamie, you've got your hand up. Jamie Tietch. Tietch. Jamie Teach. Teach. Apologies, Jamie. Welcome <laughs> to the Managed Flitter webinar. Where where are you where are you um where are you dialing in from? Uh, Toronto, Canada. Welcome. Um, um, throw us your question. I'm wondering, um, Evan, do you recommend adding users to a list when you do a mass follow so you could keep them kind of organized for when you're reaching out to them later? Yeah, no, definitely. I love lists, and especially since Twitter expanded their limit of lists, I think it's thousands. I mean, I'm, you're never going to reach it, right? Right. Um, so, yeah, especially if you're searching by a topic, by a role, then just add it according to what you just searched for. That's I'd absolutely recommend that because, like I said, it's like a folder. You can always come back. Um, you don't lose that search, basically. Right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, and one more thing too is that then they get a notification that says you added to them to a list, and that results in follows, it results in engagement, it results in thank you, and sometimes it results in hey, remove me from that list. <laughs> why, why would people ask you to remove them from the list, Evan? Well, I mean that's the tricky part with something like Twitter is there's no accountability with what people put in their bios, so someone might, well, for example. If you search CEO in Seattle, you're going to get a lot of Christian Gray from Fifty Shades of Gray um, because he's a CEO placed in Seattle, but he's a fictional character. Right. And there's a ton of role-playing Twitter accounts, and so sometimes they get mad and they're like, hey, I'm not actually, you know, this is just a fantasy thing, so go away. <laughs> That's happened a few times. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, um, let's take a question from Robert Chung. Welcome, Robert. You're unmuted. Robert, are you with us? No, okay. Let's, um, hang on, I think he was coming in there. Let's, let's just try again. Ro Robert, are you with us? Hello? No, okay. Um, if you do raise your hand, be, be prepared um, for me to unmute you and ask your question. Um, Eric Smith, we'll give you a go. You with us? No. Um, Ryan L, you've got your hand. Are you are you with us, Ryan? Welcome. Hey. Can you hear Hi, me? Ryan. Ryan, welcome. Where where are you uh, where are you joining us from? Calling in from uh, San Francisco, California. Ah, uh, the Bay Area. Welcome. Th uh, throw us your question. Awesome. Well. Great, thanks so much for having this uh, webinar. Um, my question would be, I've been using the, the power mode quite extensively. Um, I found that, uh, especially using the account search, there's a lot, um, you know, you, you see like thousands and thousands of people. So I started sorting people by um, follow, follower and following ratio. Is there like a sweet spot that you try to target if it's between five 
or you know, I guess what's the sweet spot in terms of that ratio? Is that for me then? Yeah, I mean, cool. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, power mode is beautiful. One of my favorite things about Manage Flutter, um, and there are a ton of ways to use it. I think the ratio thing is really important to remember, um, but I think more important. So yeah, it's good to find people with a small ratio. Ideally, the best followers are the one who follow only a hundred people, but follow but have five thousand followers because that means you're really important to them, right? If they follow you, um, but I think more important than that to remember when you're doing the follower growth method is actually how many followers they have because if you have a hundred followers and you're following people with 10,000 followers, there's no way they're going to care about you. So you want to look for people who only have a few more followers than you. Let's say you have a thousand followers, you want to look for people, um, you know, with um, maybe 1,200 followers at most and then fewer followers than you, they'll be a lot more likely to respond. If you want to grow followers fast, then follow people with very few followers because they'll be so excited. Um, that they'll follow you back. <laughs> I, rem I, remember, I remember the first time I joined Twitter and one of the first people I followed was Jason Calacanis and he must have had a um, some auto follower back on it mm. and I immediately got a notification that Jason Calacanis had followed me and I just, I, I remember feeling that dopamine hit of that thrill. I was like, <laughs> wow, I'm connected with yeah. Jason Calacanis and uh, that's what got me hooked into this, this crazy world. Thanks, um, thanks for that question. What else do we have? going here. Um, Daryl Guidry, excuse me if I, I pronounce your names um, incorrectly. Please unmute yourself as well. I will unmute you, but I know you have the ability to mute yourself if you want to raise your hand and answer a question. Um, Daryl, are you with us? Yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, welcome. Where are, you, where are you calling in from? I'm calling from the San Francisco Bay Area as well. My last uh -huh. name is pronounced Guidry. Guidry. Yeah, Daryl yes, Guidry, thanks. thanks for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Um, I was wondering with the, uh, when you do the list, is it possible to prioritize that list by specific influence of individuals on the list, maybe clout score or whatever the case may be, um, to just kind of see, you know, schedule that, I mean, uh, prioritize it by the influence of the individuals. Sure. I think power mode is the best way to go there. Managed Flutter has its own influence metric, which I particularly like because it depends mostly on lists. It also depends on follower count. But how many times you've been listed is a much better metric of how influential you are since you can buy Twitter followers. Yeah. Um, right, so since Cloud Score is not available, but Managed Flutter's influence is, you're good there. And power mode, um, you, can sort, you can do the account search, uh, like I think it was Ryan mentioned, and then you could sort by influence. Um, you, you could say, I want someone with an influence this at least this high. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think that's a great idea. If you want to target influencers that will get your cloud score up or um, just people you know are really experts in their field because of a high influence score. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Um, we are going to take, I know some of you have typed some of your questions through to us. We're going to work through those as well. If you don't want to sort of be live online, you can um, just pop in a question. We are going to get through some of them um, as well. Remember, we have James Peter um, as well, who can answer very specific, complex questions about Managed Flutter. For those of you that really hammer Managed Flutter really hard, we've also got um, a couple of other people, Chelsea and Dave as well so this is your time to ask or manage flitter related questions as well um andrew escobar um i'm unmuting you welcome can you can uh, are you with us i am where are you where so, are you checking in from i'm from uh, toronto canada uh, along with the other caller <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, welcome go for so it so my question is more uh, about um manage flitter itself and and their relationship uh, with Twitter, I was wondering, if, d d does the relationship exist there, and um, are they comfortable with it? Because I I've noticed the tool has been used to good effect a lot. Um, You've noticed the tool has what? Sorry, I, I I've used it before to to, to great effect, um, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering right. if, if there's a relationship with Twitter there that that allows sort of managed Flutter to exist because you know 
I wouldn't say you're trying to skirt any of Twitter's rules or anything, um, but it, it it seems to be a very effective at following and unfollowing, and, and you have that automated process where you have you know managed Twitter staff uh, processing our batches. Can you sort of get into that relationship you have with Twitter if one exists? Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll drag James, Peter, my co-founder and CTO as well into this, but I've got some comments. James, are you with us? Um, there he is. James, yep, are you with I'm us? Here. Okay, great. So um, I'll, I'll answer yep. it generally and then James can give you some other answers. Um, so basically, we um, are at the whim of... Um, all other products as well, we have to adhere to Twitter's terms of service, their API terms of service. We have to work with them according to their requirements, which we um, do very um, stringently because we like to be good partners of theirs and obviously because we have to basically. Um, so we don't have any um, you know, special treatment from them. Either way, we don't get specially treated badly and we don't get specially treated well um, and we try to remain good citizens. The remote account management um, tool obviously is within um, the terms of service. We actually literally get, um, we have people on our end that literally process the accounts. So even though it seems like from a user's point of view, it seems like a type of automation from our point of view. Um, we actually have humans curating and doing all the clicking, et cetera. Um, so we stay well in Twitter's terms of service. James, do you have um, anything to add about um, the side of things? Uh, sure. Um, I mean, in terms of, I mean, the way I like to look at it is a bit like um, SEO. I mean, it's, um, uh, you know, we kind of like the relationship between something like um, SEO Moz and um, Google, something like that. And, um, uh, you know, so the kind of stuff, work that we do with Twitter, it kind of helps you optimize your account and it helps you work better with um, your followers and gain your organic growth. And it definitely gives you competitive advantage over somebody who isn't using a tool like ours. So it's all like SEO. It's kind of um, accepted that people who are actively involved in the industry are going to use tools that um, benefit them and allow them to grow their account. Um, and yeah, and, and as Kevin says, we we do work with Twitter. I mean, in things like Ram as well, they've they've kind of reviewed it, and um, and and you know they haven't um, uh, forced to shut the shut the service down, that kind of stuff. We make sure we're good partners. So just like you can ha kind of have like black hat SEO, you can have services which are frowned upon by Google, and you you can also have the same thing in Twitter. So there's definitely like automation services that are in the black hat side of social media management. Um, but Managed Footer obviously exists very much in the White Hat space. So, um, yeah, we do review Twitter's guidelines very carefully, make sure nothing goes against their terms. And um, we're very careful, you know, even just from sort of like um, a tools perspective as well, to kind of design our tools to not sort of dramatically increase the amount of spam inside Twitter. So we don't have things like auto DMs back and that kind of stuff. So um, we're definitely on the, on the White Hat side of this stuff. And um, so if, if the question sort of aimed at, are you going to be okay using our tools um, and you're not going to run a foul of Twitter, then yes, it's, it's totally fine. It's providing you, you um, stay within their following limits and that kind of stuff and you're not uh, aggressive in your, um, in, your acti in your activity, then it's totally fine. And um, on a philosophical level, we love Twitter and we, you know, we like to do everything in the spirit of making Twitter a better service as well. So we you know, want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem at all. And there's been a certain, um, you know, shift in attitude to, towards tools like ours, where as Twitter users have become more sophisticated, they really need tools like ours to legitimately manage their account and legitimately build up their account. So there's, you know, all of our users are legitimate users, business owners, etc. So um, the legitimacy of products like ours is really, um, y you know, um, consolidating and, and becoming seen how legitimate products like ours are. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. Um, Satan Emir, your hand is raised. I'm going to unmute. I'm going to unmute you. Satan, do you have a question for us? Hello. I can hear you in the background. Okay. Okay, um, 
so if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. Um, Stephen Curtis, um, I've unmuted you. Would you like to ask us a question? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Stephen Curtis. Uh, I'm a web developer and online strategy consultant that specializes in uh, the Asian market, um, Japan, China, Korea. Um, I have two questions. Um, they're both pretty simple. The first one, you mentioned this 90 follower per day threshold um, that you noticed was kind of good to keep your account under when you're trying to grow it. Um, my question to you is, if you have an account with a much bigger follower base, like 15,000 or 20,000 followers, does that 90 per day still, uh, is that still hold true or does it scale with your follower base? No, that's a great question. Um, so I actually have some pretty specific experiences with that. When I first started doing this sort of thing, I researched it, what people had found a lot, and I was told by several sources that the limit is basically 800 a day when you get over 20,000 followers. But then I had an account suspended that had 21,000 followers and followed 150 people in a day. So yes and no. Um, I think I'm still not certain because I, I haven't really pushed it since. I haven't really had that many clients willing to experiment that heavily. And it's sort of, Twitter has some strike system where I think after three or four strikes, you know, your account's permanently gone. Um, so far, I've been able to get it back after three suspensions on one account. But, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, y you could try it, but there is a strong risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't have more details for you. I forgot, I forgot I was on webcam. Um... Thanks, Evan. Uh, um, if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. I'm going to go through some of the questions that um, have come through via the question and answer facility. Um, Adana Willow Raven, um, you're asking a question, what is the inbox feature? Evan, are you able to hop into Manage Flutter and actually get into the inbox feature and talk through it? Um, it is a feature that um, not not all managed Flutter users know about. So the inbox, the at inbox feature helps you manage your at reply stream and it's got a great number of smarts um, and it's it's really pretty useful. We use it to manage our own managed Flutter Twitter account which has about whatever 270,000 users. So um, Evan's just going to get into it now. Can you guys still see my screen? Yep. Cool. Yeah, so it's over here in the engagement tab under power post above Google Plus Sync. And um, so now I'm looking at basically all the replies. So look, some of you are watching the webinar. Um, so if I hit this first conversation, Kathy Vandermee said, listening now, thanks for the great insights. Um, so I can just say, thanks so much. Um, and I, now I can hit reply or reply and archive. Archive puts it into this folder on the left. Um, so if I just hit reply, and I can also do bulk actions with this. Um, I can mark as spam, mark as unread, mark as read. So it, yeah, it works a lot like email with the unread read function and a, a spam folder as well. And up here is the influence sorting. If I drag this, you see now I've got people with more than, I think more than 1.0 influence. Is that right? Um, James, do you want to do you just want to, without revealing our secrets, do you want to quickly talk about the influence <laughs> uh, feature on Manage Flutter and um, what it that would be cool. what it takes into account? They don't even tell me. <laughs> they don't even tell me either. Jeez, you know. <laughs> it's magic. I can't tell you. Um, it takes into account a number of factors. Um, it's primarily weighted on things like uh, the number of followers you have, uh, the ratio that people follow you back. Um, so if you have a lot of people following you compared to the number of people who follow you back, that's taken into account. Uh, it also takes into account the number of times you've listed. Um, as Evan says, that's, that's really quite a strong signal that we use quite a lot. Um, and a number of other factors, sort of just the spamminess of the account. There's a number of things that we look at, like profile images and usernames and that kind of stuff. There's a few things. We also kind of identify patterns of really common 
um, bots that pop up. So um, there's certain types of following ratios that are really common um, that a lot of spam accounts use. So we take that into account to reduce their influence. Um, so yeah, it's basically, we, we tweak it all the time, but it's um, it's kind of just, you can kind of think of it as sort of like a common sense uh, measure of, of how, um, how many people that account will really be able to reach. Um, and so if you do use something like the influence filter on our inbox, you can make sure you're actually responding to um, you know, the really um, most important accounts. And so if somebody has like, you know, 100,000 followers mention you and, you know, you really want to respond to them because it's going to, you know, they can then pass a new message to other people, um, you can use that uh, filter in that box to, um, to, to make that happen. Thanks. Um, that's the ad inbox feature. It is only available to the business users. Uh, now, um, we've got a couple of hands raised as well and we've got a couple of questions um probably a question another question for you james any plans to update power mode this is from ryan l any plans to update power mode to combine tweet search location and bio search right now i can only use one not all filters sure um i mean we're continuing to work on power mode we've got quite a lot of ideas for it it's um it's become pretty popular since we launched it so we want to keep you know um working away at it um uh, in terms of specific question, um, combining them, um, we may do that. Um, the main problem with that is like each one of those data sources kind of takes in um, sort of relatively small segments. So if you were to combine them together, if you were kind of do the intersection, um, then you can actually end up with a very small number of people. Um, but having said that, it doesn't make sense in some situations. So um, we may look into it. Um, I can understand under some situations why it makes sense. Um, if you do have any specific use cases that you're looking for, it'd be really great if you send that over. Um, if you just send us an email at support as well, um, we review all that stuff and um, it all goes into our sort of feedback box and we kind of prioritize these things. So um, yeah, we're, we're continuing to work on it. So um, hopefully something like that will come out. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions that we don't get covered, please email us at contact at manageflutter.com or you can tweet us at manageflutter. Um, we love feedback. We really work hard to try and get back um, to all the feedback. So please, um, if we missed something in this webinar, please email us. We've gone 45 minutes, but um, I think we're going to make ourselves available for another five to 10 minutes. We've got a lot of questions coming through, a couple of hands being raised. Hit us with your Twitter questions, your managed Twitter questions. You've got some of the best minds here. You've got um, Evan, you've got James. Um, please flick us your managed Flutter and Twitter questions. We are here for you. I'm going to, um, Roger, Sam, I'm going to unmute you. And um, Roger, welcome. Are you with us? Hi, yep. Um, where, are you, where are you checking in from? I'm calling from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Cool. Um, go for it. Yeah, so uh, my question is, uh, well, recently I took over managing our company's social media, and uh, currently I'm using Managed Flitter in freebie mode, uh, and I'm evaluating a, a variety of social media management tools. Uh, with regards to Managed Flitter, what is the difference between free and Pro and I guess the other, uh, the business service, and how would you recommend pitching Manage Flitter to a boss or manager? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that combined with um, um, Dave Zariety, who works a lot on support, and I'll get him to chip in as well. Dave, are you with us? Are you unmuted? Okay, if someone can just unmute Dave, James, if you can just unmute Dave while I. There we go. I'll, I'll unmute him. Okay. Dave, you with us? Hello, Dave. Okay, I'm going to unmute him. There we go. Dave, you should be unmuted now. There we go. Hey, guys. Okay, Dave, there just hold go. on. I'll, I'll provide first stage of the answer and, and you can provide um, second. So the, yeah. the advantages of pro versus business, um, a massive amount of features, the number of um, people you can follow per day, um, um, the power post feature where you can find out when people are online and you can schedule tweets um, and, and target those tweets to when they're online, right through to tweet analytics where you can follow keywords on Twitter, you can, you can track how many times keywords are mentioned. 
on Twitter. Um, in terms of the business account, you get access to your um, at inbox. You get access to email reports where you get pinged every day on the growth and other elements of your account. That's just a very brief overview. If you go to manageflitter.com forward slash pro, you'll get a, a really accurate breakdown. But Dave, just um, you d deal with a lot of these questions every day. So why don't you fill in some of the gaps that I left? Yeah, so when you upgrade, obviously, from the free account, one of the biggest things um, that everybody tends to rave about is your unlimited unfollowing. So as Evan said earlier, you could only follow really a, a very select amount of people. But when you upgrade to a pro account, you actually have unlimited unfollowing. And what we found is that Twitter doesn't really suspend accounts for the amount of unfollows that they do. So this genuinely helps you to clean up your account. And so, yeah, and you can see on the left of, of Evan's screen just all the options that you have for unfollowing and that this isn't limited to a certain amount of actions per day. So and, that's um... kind of one of the bigger ones. That's that's um, kind of the kind of the bigger ones. I'm just also the power mode as well is um, only available in pro. I'm pretty sure um, if that's correct. Yeah, that's and, correct. And power power mode um, is a really really useful feature to gain a lot of insight into your accounts and get a lot of information about your connections, your followers and followers. You can really slice and dice your account in very very interesting ways with power mode. So um, we'll happily um, you know drop us a line. We can provide a a walkthrough um, with you and we can go through it and answer all your specific questions if you're interested. You know, contact at manageblitter.com. And we'll go through the pro account, the business account, all the different features. Also, we've got a YouTube channel as well. There's some videos on there. Um, but um, yeah, drop us a line. So let's get uh, back to some of the questions. Um, thanks for that, um, Roger. Roger, just drop us a line if you would like to know more. Sounds good. Thanks. Um, um, I have a manage for the question as well. When I copy followers, I often try to filter out people already following me. However, I've noticed this doesn't work for accounts of similar user base. I see lots with unfollow buttons as well as follows. Okay, I think that's from Stephen. Stephen, um, just drop us a line with specific questions to help. We'll, we'll help you. Um, question perhaps for Evan. Can you over tweet, i.e. does it look bad if you copy pasting the same message to many people in an attempt to market? Good question. It is a good question. Um, yeah, so I usually use a few different messages. I'll do maybe 10 to 15 tweets um, with one message and then switch it a little. Um, the thing to remember is Twitter made mentions pseudo-private, as in if you mention someone, as in there's an at symbol at the beginning of the tweet, it only shows if someone goes to your Twitter account and scrolls through your tweets and sees that tweet. It does not show in feeds anymore, which is great because it's sort of halfway in between a just completely public tweet and a direct message. So it adds some privacy so that you don't start looking really fishy. Um, but yeah, you do want to be aware of that. And I would say, you know, every 10 to 20 tweets, just switch it up completely, change the angle, and look at who you're tweeting to. And if you need to change the message at all for that specific person, you know, you paste it in and then you edit it and then you tweet it. And variations, and on, a th variations on a theme, you know, you can have exactly. the, the, the message, but, you know, uh, mash it up, you know, come at it from a different angle, a question, a statement, a comment, a link, but you're making the same point. Yeah, totally. And I strongly recommend Twitter's hotkeys. I don't know if you've ever used them, um, but they make things really fast. So there they are. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, question for James. Is there a way to, to use Managed Flutter to back up our Twitter account to protect it? Well, Twitter actually lets you download your entire account um, into a zip file, just as a matter of interest, if you don't know that. So you can use Twitter itself. But I don't know if we um, – is there any anything added value on top of that that we offer, James? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, there's um, the, the Twitter archive feature, I believe it only works once. So I think once you run it, you can't run it again. They may have changed that. Um, 
but um, it's, it's also um, a little bit limited in some forms. Um, so we do offer um, the account export feature. Um, so if you go down to your dashboard and you go to export account, um, there's a number of features there. Um, you can download everyone you follow, um, everybody who follows you, and that kind of stuff. There's a few additional reports as well um, uh, that include things like bios and locations. So um, it kind of backs up uh, this data. Um, I mean, alternatively, you can also use some of our tools like um, copy followers and copy following. So in theory, you could kind of create like a mirror account that follows the same people. Um, would be one other way to do it, um, particularly because uh, because of the daily follow limits, it would be very hard to kind of reconstruct an account. Um, so yeah, th there's a few options for that. I wouldn't say there's any single one great way to do it. Um, I mean, personally, I would probably just just use the account export feature and maybe just once a month just download the list, so that's not all lost if your if your account gets hacked in some way. Um, and yeah, that'd be the way main main way I do it. And if you use the account, I mean, I, I've downloaded my account once. If you've got an account that's quite old, it's quite interesting to go back a few years and to notice how you've evolved um, as, a, as a tweeter. So um, it's quite interesting. But just going to hammer through just a couple of questions. We've got a couple of minutes left. Quickly raise your hand if you want to ask a question to one of us about Managed Flutter or Twitter. But going to go through just a few more questions and then we'll bring it to a close. James, another one for you, spam, prob spam probability, what is it and how is it measured on Managed Flutter? Uh, yeah, again, so this works very similar to account influence. In fact, it's kind of a factor in influence. Um, it, so again, it, it looks at things like we identify patterns that we see in spam accounts. Um, largely what we try to identify here is we're not necessarily looking at the content, but we're looking at um, things like bots. So there tends to be quite large networks of spam accounts that are just entirely fake, and they tend to follow a lot of people but not have a lot of people following them. Um, so we look at a few factors around that. Um, we also look at a little bit about what they post and um, the number of times they're listed and a few, few factors around there. Um, so most um, our, our spam rating goes from 0% to 100%. Um, if you're above 50%, then you're considered um, spam by our system. Um, so most people will kind of be 10 to 20%. So that's the, that's the place you want your account to be. If you're above that, then... Um, you might have some issues with your follower ratio or something like that. And the the influence measure, what does it go between on our system? Uh, so the influence measure isn't a percent. It kind of goes from zero. Um, I think the highest one is about, um, I'm not sure. It's basically like, um, it's, it's got no cap, essentially. So if accounts, accounts keep growing, they can become really huge. I think it's, I think... Um, around 200 or something like that is the highest one. Very few people are over one. It's kind of a, a ranking system like that. Okay, I need to look more into that. Okay, last yeah, hand actually. raise and last question. Um, how to find the best time to post based on different time zones from Russell James. Russell, our tool, our power post tool where you schedule tweets, our power post looks at your account um, based on a whole number of metrics and you can layer a time zone on top of the power post. So Evan's just in power post now. Evan, just just layer a time zone. So just put a um, layer Sydney on top of your your followers. So just hit um, add to timeline. So you should be able to add a location. So add, put in Sydney. So you can actually layer a time zone. So you'll see, there we go. So what you want to look for is you want to look for the intersection between the time zone and your followers um, on the account, or you can just use the time zone. So PowerPost provides a whole um, number of ways that you can target those followers. Really nifty tool, um, one of our most popular features on the system. Okay, last hand raise. Daryl, you up again. I'm going to unmute you. Actually, I think you're unmuted, Daryl. You got another question? Oh, there I am. <laughs> I had to unmute myself. Uh, yeah, I was wondering um, if there's going to be an app for Managed Flitter, if there's any, any app in the works. Um, I'd love to say yes. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we, we've, we've got to pick our battles here. We've got so many um, features that we want to roll out. And we've, we've, um, I'd love to say yes. And at the moment, there's nothing being worked on. Tell us why. Tell us why. Um, uh, you know, an app is so important to you. Give us a bit of insight into um, your needs around that. Well, for me, you know, I've got the iPhone. I'm sure, you know, many people have the Android as well. But um, 
I'm I'm very rarely in front of a computer. Like right now, I'm actually on the webinar on my phone. I'm usually just out and about and never really sitting in front of a desktop. Right. So um, it, it, it's I mean, and and you know, I can I've access managed Twitter on my uh, on my mobile device, and you know, I can navigate it. It it works, but it's just not you know, it's just not as easy as uh, an app would possibly be. I hear you. And just, to, just I'm asking this as a matter of curiosity and not um, putting you on the spot. Are you a free or paid user of Manage Flutter? Oh, paid. Paid. Okay. Because uh, we, f- we find that a lot of the free users do request an app, so we're not sure um, where that crossover of app request, if it is actually coming from um, some of our paid users. But look, we'd love to get there. Um, we're a bootstrap company. Um, we, we only sleep or sleep three hours a day as it is, so I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but look, keep nagging us, please. Um, keep nagging us. We, we will get there, I promise you. So um, We'll do. We'll do. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Daryl. Thanks for the support. Um, Absolutely. Thank you. Um, if anyone's also listening that's from the New York area, um, we are coming to New York. We're going to be having a meetup. We're going to be having a, a Managed Flutter Masterclass, which is the first time James, Evan, and Dave are hearing about this. But guess what, you guys? There's uh, <laughs> We have some plans. And that comes from the creative strategy department run, headed, and managed by Chelsea Plowright. Um, so if you're in New York, just watch your inbox and your tweets, um, and please join us. Um, and Eric, last question, last question is yours. Eric, you want to ask us the, the last question? Your hand was up. Yes. Can you hear me? We can. Go for it. Okay. Um, I manage a – I've been a – customer for almost a year and I manage for a brand and uh, the the primary question I had is I know you said uh, 90 a day you shouldn't follow more than that um, does it does it make a difference because what I've found is advertising uh, on Twitter versus doing uh, actually looking for accounts to follow Managed Flitter has helped my uh, follower rate go from uh, about 500 we started, and now we're at 5,300. 5, so That's great. Well done. We, we're, 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 uh, it's a great service, but uh, we're following more than 90 people a day, though. Oh, yeah? And you haven't been suspended? I have not. Um, I'm embarrassed to even say the number. I'm embarrassed. It's a, it's a very big number, but I would say like 20, 30 percent of the people follow back. Yeah, how many? Can you can you please tell the number? Because I'm really curious. One thousand. A day. Every other day. Can we can we ask wow. with can we ask? Is it a very high profile brand? Uh, yes. It's in 650 stores. Wow. Okay, I wonder. I wonder. James will probably have some comments around this as well. Yeah, I mean, this is this is part of the reason why whenever people ask us how many people can I follow a day, we kind of give very vague answers, and that's specifically for this case. Um, Twitter kind of has a whole bunch of rules around it, and if you have um, like a well-known brand, if you follow a lot of people and you do actually get a really good response rate, like lots of people are following you back, we do notice that um, you're going to be able to get away get away with a lot more. Um, so, I mean, the short answer is no. I can. Some people get away with, you know, huge amounts. Um, so, um, if that works for you, that's that's totally fine. We we recommend the lower numbers because if you um, kind of are following in an untargeted way, we don't kind of want people to get into a bad situation. Um, but there are certainly accounts that um, that have no issues following huge numbers. Um, so, so I I wouldn't be worried. Um, yeah. I think too. One thing that's interesting that I've noticed is that Twitter. Is- is focusing a lot more on follower following ratio than they are on how many people you follow. But that number 90 comes from more last summer when I learned it the hard way. Um, so it is totally possible that they've been changing to what they're looking at and um, and I'm outdated. And they, and they would be changing that the whole time as well. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, hopefully they're getting smart at it as well. Okay, guys and girls. Um, and- you do get... Um, you do get- Sorry, go. Yeah, yes, I'll just say, I mean, you do, obviously, um, as I've said, there's kind of like a three-strike system. So um, 
it's probably not an ideal strategy, but sometimes you know it's a good idea just to kind of push it as far as you can, and then if you get suspended, then you know you've pushed it too far. So um, you know you can get away with kind of doing it once. So um, I, I wouldn't normally say that's an awesome way to do it. And so if you stay below the hundred, you're not you're never going to get suspended. Uh, we find or the ninety, but um, but yeah, you can push it a little bit occasionally and just see how far you can get. Is the way a lot of people like to do it. Eric, does that help you a little bit? I know it's nothing definitive, but it's a bit of, it, bit of feedback. It, it, it does. And I also wanted to tell everybody here, um, pound for pound, I mean, we've spent lots of money on Twitter advertising. It does not even come close to manage Flitter. In terms of, like, the, uh, uh, the return on investment is what I mean to say. Manage Flitter has, has grown the account literally from 500 followers to right now are around 5,400, and that's in about three or four months, actually three and a half months. Well, that's terrific news. I mean, that's what we, we love to hear in the spirit of uh, building the product is to help Twitter users get more out of Twitter, so that's excellent. Are you, um, I couldn't remember, did you mention if you're a, um, a pro business user? Uh, I actually have the pro account. Okay, actually, the, the business account, sorry, the business account. Great, well. Uh... I started off with the free account, um, then I spoke to somebody there, and they said, might as well just give the, I think it was the business account a try, and uh, we moved up since there. Since then. Right. Do you, want, do you want to give um, your product a punt? You want yes. To go for it. You, the, the, the name of the brand is called Lata Kafir, Russian Kafir. They're in all the Whole Foods stores, um, and they're in all the Wegman stores in the United States. And what type Can of... You spell that? L-A-T-T-A, Kefir, K-E-F-I-R. And is that um, that's a mix of coffee and kefir? Is that correct? They make kefir. Okay. Interesting. It hasn't really taken off in Australia yet, so maybe it's the next market for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we tend to be a little bit behind um, in product. We're ahead in time, but... Um, Eric, I really appreciate your support. Always feel free to tweet us or drop us an email. And has this webinar been useful for you at all, Eric? Um, we, we always try to give, give our users you know, content and tools to, to get better at Twitter and manage Flutter. It has been useful. Um, we sh like I said, when I first started out, uh, the Facebook presence was there, but there was, I mean, most of the Twitter uh, accounts that we had we're, we're pretty much non-existent. And then with the, all the tools that you guys have, the educational tools, and then obviously the live support, that's what helped the first month. So also there's live support. Who did um, you speak to? Do you remember? Was it Chelsea or Dave? I believe it was Chelsea. But that's oh. what got through the first couple, the first month, because there's a lot of stuff there you have to learn. For instance, like tweet search is works for us versus like just searching accounts because think about it like if you if if you search like hashtag kafir you know you'll see everybody that has tweeted like kafir so they might be interested in following you see so just stuff like that i mean i can't i i looked around and i couldn't find any other program that did that or just as as effective as as managed flitter Eric, would you like Especially, a job in our marketing department by any chance? <laughs> no, I'm just trying. I'm trying to let you know you. No, I appreciate you really it. Help this this really, company a lot. I really, really appreciate it. I'd like to be in touch with you. We're always looking for case studies, um, so that to help other clients. Um, so I'd really like to be in touch with you. Um, I'm just trying to see. Okay, I think we've got your email address, so I appreciate that. What we're thinking of doing, which might be useful to you, Eric, we're thinking of the next webinar of having a bit of a masterclass, maybe with Evan and James, where we get into really some of the more advanced techniques and really some of the deep tools and, and features of Manage Flutter. So, you know, familiar users like yourself can come in and we really brainstorm on how to do some interesting things around your account and Manage Flutter. So keep an eye for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Where, where are you um, calling in from again? Worcester, Massachusetts. It's right outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Nice, nice. Well, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in New York soon. It's not too far from you. Um, if you'd like to come um, to the masterclass or the meetup, um, you're obviously very welcome, and we'd love to meet you. Thank you, thank you very much. Like I said, we've spent 
thousands and nothing comes close to this so thank you for your service well that's a lovely way to end it you've been bringing a smile to my face on this uh <laughs> this friday morning well i know we've uh, thanks eric i've muted you we've gone a bit over time um so from the from the managed flitter team dave chelsea james joe myself um and um from evan uh, appreciate it evan thank you very much people can connect with you on twitter of course mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Marketer underscore social. Look, a lot of people have already been mentioning me. So, and I forgot yeah, to mention, and I forgot to mention, Evan has written a, some awesome blog posts for us. If you go to blog.manageflitter.com, he's written a. I think there's about five up there so far, and he's going to be writing more blog posts for us. Um, he writes terrific articles. Um, really, some information that you can really, um, you know, use and walk away with. So go to the um, blog, connect with Evan, connect with us, drop us an email, stay in touch. We're going to try to do more of these. So um, from all of us all over the world, um, thank you. And we'll see you at the next one. Okay.